The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of Round the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells, um, one of the hosts of Between Two Minutes and Oriented Television. I'd um, like to welcome those watching on Ori Neighbor Television and also those watching on YouTube. Um, of course, um, a lot to talk about this week. Um, we've had a big story that we got to talk about. We've got to break that down. I'm bre- also breaking down week seven recaps for football. Um, also, um, you know, so we got a lot to talk about this week. Um, the big story, obviously, is that Royal Oak, um, Royal Oak coach Justin Truitt was placed on administrative leave. Um, on um thursday um for an inappropriate comment um you know and uh for inappropriate comments um you know when you really look at it here i mean like there's always two sides of story on on um on this type of issue you know i mean like you know so you know according to media reports it said he used inappropriate comments like swearing while addressing the players um Royal Oak Athletic Director Brian Gordon did send out a statement on this. Of course, I'd like to read it here. This is a quote. We are currently investigating allegations of inappropriate language while addressing and working with players leading to the team within a negative environment. These allegations are being thoroughly reviewed by me and fellow administrators. We take these reports very seriously. We commend our student athletes for bringing this to our attention. We have focused interest in promoting the, high, the highest standards and conduct and all. I would like to assure our parents and athletes that these allegations no way align with our core values as an athletic program. That's what Gordon said um, in a statement to Royal Oak parents and families, um, athletic um, varsity players and families. Of course, um, Colin Campbell, the interim coach, took over last week um, as the interim coach. Um, he coached both the JV and the varsity teams against Troy. Um, it did not end well for Troy. Of course, the 42 nothing loss. Um, you know, and, and for Royal Oak the last few weeks, I mean, like, you look at the positives, obviously, with, um, Ellie Finch being homecoming queen, um, on the court playing football, um, you know, being a captain and all that, that positive light, and then now you get this, this is a negative deal to it, um, now you get negative here, so, you know, so, it's been a rough week for these players, um, you know, dealing with this and, you know, and then you look at what they've gone through this season and true its first year. I mean, you know, they're one and six. Um, I mean, they've only made the playoffs twice and, you know, and they're 34 and 105 since 2006. I mean, that tells you something right there. Um, so I just there's always two sides to the story, and they still got to play Avondale and Madison Heights Lampier, both on the road to close out the season. So we don't know if Truett's going to be back or not for those two games. Um, but, you know, they said the investigation's currently ongoing, so it's something to really keep an eye on um, when you look at the Royal Oak situation. But like I've always said, there's always two sides to the story. So, you know, and... So it's something to really keep an eye on. So, you know, my take on it, you know, there's always two sides to the story. Um, You know, I mean, like, um, so, but we'll see what happens. But when you look at, when you look at the record, you know what I mean? The one in six this year. And then, you know, with high expectations, you know, you look at, you had players like Makai Jenkins, you had Ellie Finch, Hunter Seidel, um, and the fact they sit one and six, you know what I mean? It's very challenging. And then, of course, you look at the last, since the end of the six, Royal Oaks 34 and 105. You know what I mean? Those are numbers you can't dispute. You know, 34 and 105. So if you're athletic director Brian Gordon, you know what I mean? You really got to look at, obviously, you know, you got to look at, obviously, I mean, like, you know, when you look at, um, you know, your record, you know what I mean? The record says a lot. So, but also, you know, you got to also, you know what I mean? And and it's important for, um, and it's important, you know what I mean? Like, you know, 
I mean, like to um, you know, for the well being of the team, the safety of the team, you know, it's that's very important. So this will be something to really keep an eye on. Um with involving Royal Oak, um, but there's always two sides to the story, so we haven't heard Truett's side yet. Um, I know he deactivated his Twitter account. Um, so there's, like I said, there's always two sides to the story. So, so this will be something to really keep a close eye on um, going forward um, surrounding Royal Oak. Um, let's recap Week Seven. Um, obviously, we've had the Gold Blue. The Gold Blue Challenge, we've had the last week of league play in the white and in the red. Um, some really unique games, some close games, some blowout games. Very interesting stat to tell you here. Um, three gold teams were shut out this week, last week. Three gold teams were just shut out. Um, and we're going to break those down. Um, the first game we got to break down is Troy Athens and Pontiac that was 42 nothing in favor of Troy Athens. Um, both the Asher brothers played really well in that game. Um, Troy Athens showed that um, you know, they had a bounce back game, um, bounce back um for them. So, you know, it was a good win for them. Um uh, for Pontiac, you know, it was gonna be very difficult for them. Um just I know what they're going through right now. They're having a really tough time. Um just trying to figure things out right now um, is Coach Ken Wade and his team. Um, but you know, with Athens, for Athens right now, they're they're um, they got a big one looming with Troy, and you know, and that's not going to be an easy game um, for um, that'll be very interesting. Troy, Troy, Athens. We're gonna break that one down. I think that's a big one for both teams to see, especially for postseason hopes. Um, to see where each team's at going forward there. Um, the uh, Another another um, game we got to talk about was Seaholm against um, Berkeley. That was fi- that was um, 52 nothing. Um, Seaholm really was dominant in that game. Um, you know, I mean, like, Seaholm was really dominant. Um, that was 56 nothing. Um, Seaholm had some big games, especially on the ground. Um, you know, when you look at players that got touchdowns in that game, you look at um you look at obviously um both Kinney brothers they played really well again. Um and then you have um I mean Sean Emerson and Colton Kinney both had two touchdowns, um both one on the ground, one in the air. Um Kyle Robbins, Will Rodder, Joey Leonard, Alex Smith each had a rushing touchdown as well. I mean that tells you how dominant Seaholm's been right now. I mean, they are rolling right now. They're clicking on all cylinders right now. And right now, they're rolling. They're on a roll right now. I mean, that's really the bottom line is when you look at Seaholm. On Berkeley's side, you know, I thought, you know, they turned the corner when they beat Royal Oak. Um, but this is a step back, in my opinion, when I look at Berkeley. Um, the fact they've struggled all year long. Um Defensively, they've been a mess. Um, offensively, there were some positives. Um, but to me, Berkeley looks like a complete mess. They're a mess right now. You know, and you know, and, and it's unfortunate, you know what I mean, for a team that last two years have been really successful, uh, last three years have been really successful to taking a step back this year. Um, it's really been that way for Berkeley this season um just to you know to see where they're at where they've been um recently but now this year they they're really struggling to find um some confidence in you know they're really struggling see home on the other hand they're on a roll um they are clicking on all cylinders right now um that's my take on um both those teams in the third game was Troy and Royal Oak of course um Royal Oak, we talked about the distractions, obviously, with um, the Dustin Truitt situation. Of course, the, um, he's put on administrative leave. Um, so he was suspended for the game. Of course, Colin Campbell took over. Um, they were playing Troy. Um, and it was going to be a difficult task for them. Um, for Troy, you know, they had they played their best offensive game of the year in that one. Um, defensively, they were pretty, they were dominant all night too. <laughs> um, so when I really look at 
in that game, Troy was the dominant team. <clears throat> and the bottom line is, <clears throat> excuse me there, um, Royal Oak had a lot of distractions. Um, Royal Oak had a lot of distractions. Um, and, of course, we knew, you know, with the allegations, we knew about, you know, with the, um, the psyche, the mental psyche. We didn't know where it was going to be for them. And, you know, Colin Campbell taking over. Um, I mean, like, and they lost 42 nothing. I mean, one, yes, Troy's solid, but, you know, but you got to find a way. You know, when you, when you have everything that's going around you, going against you, you know, you got to find a way to, to at least, you know what I mean, like, show, show some fight, you know what I mean? And, you know, and Troy was not, and Troy was, to me, in my opinion, Troy was offensively challenged coming into that game. I mean, you know, just recently they were shut up. I see home, 52 nothing. Um, I know that was last week prior to that. And then Troy bounced back. Um, shut out Royal Oak, who had a really experienced team. I mean, you look at play they have players out there. You got Hudson Seidel up. A quarterback, Makai Jenkins at running back, and then of course they have a very good line, of course, about Ellie Finch. Um <laughs> so I just don't understand um that score. I, I mean it was mind boggling. So <coughs> excuse me, been coughing a lot. Um so it was mind boggling to see um you know, to see Royal Oak, I mean like um Get shut out by Troy. Um, just really, really <coughs> surprising to see what happened that game. I mean, kudos to Troy. I mean, had the best game of the year offensively. <coughs> Excuse me. Man, I'm coughing a lot today. Apologize. Um, but with Royal Oak, um, you know, I mean, like, they've got to figure some things out. I mean, Royal Oak, I mean, like, they got two road games coming up. I mean, Avondale's rolling right now, coming off an emotional win. We're going to break that one down. Um, <coughs> and then, um, and then of course, you close out the Madison Eyes Lamp here, another really good team. So, when you look at this game, and then on Troy's side of things, they're getting ready for that Athens game. It is a big one. <coughs> I mean, both teams, I mean, like Troy... If they can get this one, you know, they're looking pretty good postseason-wise. Um, now, do I think, when I'm looking at, I looked at Snooze to use his playoff maps, and Troy right now, deemed a two-seed right now. I just don't know if I see that. I just don't know if I see that right now. And, you know, for Troy, when I look at them, they've got to prove to me something. You know, I just don't know if I can trust Troy going forward. I mean, I still don't. So, this will be interesting to see how they do going forward. Now, they close out the year with Frazier. That is a, that should be a win for them. Um, so, Troy right now, they've got to find, they got to be more aggressive on offense. Yes, the 42 points is a start. Um, so, that's something to really, really look at. So, when you describe Troy, I mean... You know, they got to be more creative offensively. Yes, Nolan Block has been really good running the ball. Um, but they need Darius Whiteside, especially at wide receiver. Um, even though he's going to be in the secondary when he gets to Grand Valley. Um, so, when I look at Troy, I mean, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. So, we'll see what happens. Um, we will see what happens there. Um Ferndale and Farmington, um, you know, in that one, that was 34-20 in favor of Farmington. Um, good get, good bounce back game for um, Dominic Pesci and um, Cam Petaway. Both of them had big nights. Um, <coughs> I mean, Ferndale putting 20 points. Um, you know, when I look at Ferndale right now, they're, they're a team that they're on the outside looking in right now despite winning the gold, I mean, winning the, um, clinching at least a share of the gold title. Um, to me, when I look at them is the schedule they played. I mean, I think the schedule they played should get them in. 
But the problem is I think Division 2 is really good this year. And I think that's Ferndale's problem. Yes, you know what I mean? And when you look at when they change this playoff system, you know, six wins doesn't guarantee you a trip to postseason. It doesn't. Playing a tough strength of schedule, you know what I mean? That helps you. You look at teams like South Arts and Tech. You look at Lake Oregon. I mean, you look at a team like Oxford, you know what I mean? You know, they all play monster, tough schedules. And, you know, in Ferndale, yes, they played a tough schedule. They played Grand Rapids West Catholic. I mean, that is not an easy game. I mean, it really isn't. So, when I really look at it here, um, you know, describing Ferndale right now, they have to win a big game, big non-league game. And I got to look who they play in their last non-league game of the year. But they have to win that game if they want to make think about making the playoffs. So, for Ferndale right now, it's a really tough task for them right now. Um, if they would have won the Farmington game, that would have helped them big time. Um, and then on the flip side, you have Farmington here. Um, they're starting to get it, get it together a little bit. I mean, they're looking pretty good right now for postseason birth right now. They're looking pretty good. Um, I still think when you look at Farmington, um, that game to Ypsilanti Lincoln is absolutely killing them right now. <coughs> it really is. So when you look at it here, in describing it, Farmington, you know, they're, they're starting to get it. They're starting to click on all cylinders, which is a good sign. Um, big one this week. I mean, like, for the blue title with Seaholm. That'll be really interesting. We're going to preview that in a little bit. <coughs> but still, I mean, in describing Farmington right now, I mean, like, obviously, the play of Pesci, the play of Ke Petaway, that's going to be the key going forward. For um, Coach Jason Albright's team, if he if they can get that consistency, <coughs> and I think be a little bit more better defensively. I mean, Ferndale's not a bad team; they are not bad. But right now, they got a big one with Seaholm Lumen, so that should be their focus heading into next week. So that's something to really, really watch for heading into next week: is how well. Farmington handle Seaholm's veer. That is going to be something to really watch for. But for Farmington, it's just, it's really, really business as usual for them. That's where they're rolling right now. That is really where they're at right now. Okay, now let's go to the game of the day from last week. It was at, it was in Auburn Hills. It was between Avondale and North Farmington. Um, North, I mean, Avondale won at 27-24. On a winning field goal with four seconds left. Um, that's really something to really describe about. Is that game really, you know, it told both teams of seasons. Avondale, for me, I think is solidly locked for Division Three. I think they're solidly locked. I mean, I think Coach Corey Bell's team, they played well. They executed. In the clutch, they were trailing most of the game, um, but they came back. They trailed 14 nothing at one point, and then 17-7, um, and they got that big win. For North Farmington, their playoff hopes are dashed. Really is. Um, you know, and it's pretty unfortunate for them. I mean, you know, I mean, like, they're now 2-5. and five. Um, It's pretty much dashed. But for Avondale... I think they're locked. They're locked again in, in Division Three. That's the bottom line. Now, when I looked at Snoo Steve's playoff map and saw that Birmingham Brother Rice is on there, I'm going like, yikes. Really? That's your reward? You know, going to Dick Byfield, you know what I mean, for Birmingham Brother Rice to go play Dick Byfield? You got to be kidding me. That would be, if that were the matchup, that would be a really difficult matchup for Avondale because, you know, the, Avondale hasn't seen the competition that Birmingham Brother Rice has. You know, comparing to playing in Orchard Lake St. Mary's, they've had to play Warren D. LaSalle, no by Detroit Catholic Central. That's not easy. 
That isn't easy. And yet they sit two and four in the Catholic League. I mean, how do you describe that? You can't. But that's where Avondale sits right now. I got a lot of confidence in Avondale right now. I mean, Tyler Herzog's been playing really well. Their running attack's been pretty good. Um, you know, and they won a big game like that against North Brompton, against a really good opponent. So, my take on that, on um, my take is, I think Avondale right now, they're clicking on all cylinders. So, my take on both the divisions, the blue and the, um, and the gold, of course, they get back in the division play. Oh, no, the, um, the um, gold gets back in the division play, and, and so does the blue. I mean, North Farmington does, North Farmington does cross over. Um, but my take on it is, you know, right now, when you look at the divisions, the gold, Ferndale stands out. But Avondale right now is right right there behind him. That game with Fern with Ferndale really hurts Avondale. I mean, that twenty one to ten game, that one really hurt them. So I'm curious to see what happens going forward there. Um Berkeley, Royal Oak, and Pontiac, they're really struggling right now. Really are. Um I mean, like, and then on the blue side, you know, Seaholm's the cream of the crop. Seaholm and Farmington, that's for the, all the marbles in the blue. Um, Troy, Troy, Athens. To f- see who finishes likely third in that division. Um, even though that um, Farmington's got a league loss, that was to Troy. Um, and then, but Troy still has got a lot to play for. And then you have um, North Farmington, <coughs> who is... Really struggling, especially defensively. Um, to see what happens going forward with them. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with them going forward there. Um, let's go now to um, the white division. Um, Southfield Arson Tech played Oak Park. Um, Oak Park was leading A&T 13, 12-7 at, at 13-7 at the half at one point. And then Southfield just went out and scored him 32 nothing. Um, rest of the way. Oh, no, it's 12-7, my bad. I apologize for that. Um, but a t won that one, 35-12. Um, Isaiah Marshall had a nice game, especially up on the ground. Um, and then um, he also had a nice game in the air as well. I mean, I remember that he had a nice pass to Taj on Braceful for a, for a touchdown in that game. But the schedule gets really difficult for a t It really does. I mean, they play, they play West Bloomfield this week, and then they play um, River Rouge next week. That's not easy games at all. I mean, we'll know what type of team A&T, A&T is. Playoffs, you know what with a and Thirty in. That's it. But now this is for real. We'll see if a and has, has really improved or not. I mean, when they take on a very good West Bloomfield team. I mean, that'll be really interesting to watch. And then, you know, Oak Park, you know, they've been really struggling all year. I mean, when you look at the Knights, um, they were up 12-7 and a half, put a good half together against a and but just haven't been able to finish. I mean, that's been their whole season all year long. They haven't been able to finish. That's what, I mean, that's why they sit 0-7 right now. Got a tough game on Orchard Lake St. Mary's looming. Then you got to play Clarkson. That's difficult. That is really difficult. That's a difficult final two games for Coach Greg Carter and his team. That is really difficult. But, you know, with them, you know, Oak Park, they always love to play tough schedules. I mean, you notice it early in the year. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they played Lake Orion early in the year. I mean, like, you know, and then, of course, the divi- I mean, like, you know, of course, life in the white, that's not easy. It isn't easy. So, for Oak Park, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, it, it's been a long year for them. Two tough games coming up. So, we'll see what happens going forward there for them. Harper Woods and Bloomfield Hills. Um, this was a interesting game. I mean, Harper Woods on their homecoming um, won that one 55-14. Um, they were very good. On their home field. 
Uh, Bloomfield Hills had a lot of trouble all night. Um, I mean, that's credit to Harper with his defense or athletic secondary. Um, that made some big plays in that game. Jacob Olden's been a really good player for them. Um, but now Harper Woods, I think they sit at three and five right now. Oh no, three and four right now. And you know, when you look at them, um, you know, they're they're gonna have to win out, I think, to make the playoffs if they have any chance. Um they got a tough game looming with Adams coming up. That's gonna be very daunting. You know, having to go up to Adams Road and take and roll, take on an experienced Adams team. That's gonna be very daunting. Um, and then they close out the year with Roseville. Roseville's a solid team. Um, so if you're coach, um, Rob Olden, um, really difficult matchup for you going forward there. Um, taking on a very good, um, taking on a very good Adams team and then taking on a very good, um, Roseville team. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens in that game. Really would be. Um, Blooming Hills on the flip side, you know, um, it's been a rough year for Coach Dan Laurie and his team. And I feel bad, especially for TJ Jackson. Um, he's really struggled. Um, I think the Dem as a whole team has struggled with the adjustment to the white. Um, and he probably knew this was coming, considering the success they had last year where they went um, undefeated, but they ran a nobody Detroit Catholic Central. Um, <coughs> he knew it was going to be difficult. I mean, you can't describe it in words. I mean, like, it was going to be, you'd think that that magic was going to go from from the blue to the white. <coughs> doesn't always work that way. Really doesn't. I mean, Bloomy Hill's experiencing, you know, they're experiencing, you know, what, you know, teams from the blue to the white go through. You know, people are going to say, well, what, what about North Farmington? You know, should they be in the white? You know, yeah. Or, like, um, you know, they're a team that should be in the white. Should CM be in the white? Should they be in the white next year? Yes. Should should um, Bloompy Hills be in the white next year? Yes. Because, you know, you look at them, I mean, like, obviously, with the school size they have, I mean, there should be no reason why Bloompy Hills should not be in the white, you know? But it's something to really keep an eye on. Um. Really something to keep a real close eye on, um, you know, heading into next year. But Bloomfield Hills has really, really struggled this year. They really have. And that's something to really, really address. So let's look at now um, the game of the day in the white. That was Rochester and Groves on Rochester's homecoming. This was a heck of a game. I mean, it was a 10-6 game. Um, Rochester won that one. Um... Good defensive game. Um, Rochester's defense really found a way and won that game. Um, I'm telling you what, you know, I'm going to go Groves first before I talk Rochester. To me, I think Groves is in trouble. I mean, now, what helps Groves is the fact that they're playing Berkeley this week and not Lake Orion. Because if it was Lake Orion, it'd be a difficult match for Groves. Um, but you look at Groves... Um, they got Seaholm coming up next week. That's very difficult. That's going to be a really difficult game because you look at Seaholm. The Maples are rolling right now. They are on a mission. And the fact of the possibility is you could see Seaholm for two straight weeks. Because according to Snooze's map, you're playing Seaholm in the first round. That tells you something right there. So, if you're Groves, you know, you're in a tough spot right now. But lucky for you, you're playing Berkeley this week and not Lake Orion. Because if, that, because if they would have went the normal red-white crossover, they're playing Lake, I mean, like, Groves would have been playing Lake Orion and Berkeley would have been playing North Farmington. But instead, you know, you got North Farmington taking on um, Lake Orion, and then you have Groves taking on Berkeley. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Now on Rochester's side, um, they're rolling. They're red hot right now. 
Interesting game with Stony Creek this week. So it'll be something to really watch for. But you gotta really you gotta really love to play Grant Calgano at running back. Alex Bueno at running at quarterback. Um and then of course Jacob Bolden at him wide. Um <coughs> and Rochester's defense has been pretty good as well. So that's something to really watch for going forward there. Um Rochester's rolling right now. Um we'll see what happens. I mean Right now, they're looking pretty good right now for a postseason spot. So, that's something to really, really watch for with Rochester going forward there. I mean, they've bounced back from that Utica game. I still think that Utica game is really hurting them a little bit. So, and Utica just lost Utica forward, and that was an upset. So, that was a stunner right there. So, we'll see what happens. But, when I look at the white right now, clearly a and the top team. Rochester, I think, is number two. Harper Woods is three. Um, Groves is four. Even though Groves did beat Harper Woods, um, I still think if Harper Woods, you know, I still think Harper Woods is a little bit better, more athletically. Um, and then you have um, Bloomfield Hills right now. I think is the is the team that's really I mean, Bloomfield Hills and it's Oak Park. So you know, so that's my take on the white right now. So we'll see what happens there going forward. There, um, let's go to the red. Um, West Bloomfield had no problem with Oxford, 34-3. Um, for West Bloomfield, without um, Raekwon Nance, that says something right there. Um, Brandon Davis Swan had a nice game in that one against Oxford. Um, they're rolling right now, clicking on all cylinders, but their schedule is going to get tough. They got A&T Lumen next week on the road, and then they got Utica Eisenhower coming to the swamp. So that'll be really interesting. Um, in that one, West Bloop is completely rolling right now, though. Even without um, Raekwon Nance, I mean, Kenny Jones has been playing outstanding football. Samaj Morgan has been playing outstanding football. I mean, Herring's been playing outstanding football. Um, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens in that one. Um, with Oxford, you know, there's a lot of optimism with them for this week taking on Bloopy Hills. Um, I think they got a good chance to win that game. Um, it's been a struggle for them, especially offensively. You know, they've only, they have not fared well. They have not gotten double digit points in a couple weeks. They really haven't. And it's been a struggle for them. So when describing, when describing Oxford, um, they're really struggling right now. I mean, Jay Katie got a field goal. It was the only points of the game, um, in that one, but they're really struggling. And they got, yeah, they got Bloomfield Hills coming up next week on the road. And then they got to go to Chippewa Valley. And Chippewa Valley just got upset by Romeo this week. So, I will be very curious to see how Chippewa Valley re responds in this one. Considering that, yeah, they didn't win the Mac Red this year. Macomb Dakota won that. Um, They knocked off Utica Eisenhower for that. Um, So, I'm very curious to see what happens there. Um. For Oxford, when they go to Chippewa Valley to take on a Scott Merchant program, that's going to be tough for them. That'll be really, really difficult. So that's something to really, really watch for going forward there. Um, Adams had no issue with Stony Creek. Um, that score was um, that score was 44-18. Um, Adams looked really good. Um, they they looked. They looked apart. The they looked really good. I mean, like, you know, when you look at, obviously, um, they had three picks for two defensive touchdowns. Parker Pico played well. Tate Pico played well. Um, you know, and I think, you know, when you look at Adams, you know, they're just, they're getting ready for the playoffs. I mean, they're they're just getting ready for the postseason. Um, yes, they got Harper Woods looming next week. I mean, this week. And then they got Sterling Heights Stevenson. Both those games, I think Harper Woods might be the tough for the two games. Because Sterling Heights Stevenson this year has really, really struggled this year. So, for Adams right now, I think they should use these next two weeks to get themselves ready for the postseason. Um, you got enough pieces to make a postseason run. Um, you got a chance. I think Adams has a great chance um, to really do some damage. So, that's something to really, really watch for going forward with them. So that's something to really, really watch for. Then on the flip side with um Stony Creek, as I said last week, 
you win, you win out, I think you're in. Um, that new Baltimore and Bay game is really interesting. Um, but I, I think with Stony Creek, you know what I mean? I, you you got um you got to win your next two games. That Rochester game is going to be a really tough game for you. So that's something to really really watch for. So if you're Stony Creek, you know now you're at four. You're three and four. You got a big one looming. Um, if you don't win that Rochester game, then your playoff hopes are pretty much shot. And that is something to really watch for. I mean. You know, for Stony Creek. If they went out, I think they're in. That's how I'm viewing it. Um, And then you had Clarkson Lake Orion. It was 45-41 Clarkston at Lake Orion on Friday night. Ethan Clark, 410 rushing yards, four touchdowns, 18th best game in state history. That says a lot right there. But yet, Lake Orion had a chance to win the game. They recovered two onside kicks. They had two defensive scores. I mean, Jordan definitely took one back, I think, for 49 yards. And then they had a fumble. And then they had a fumble for a touchdown. I mean, Clarkson's defense was not good all night. They were not great. But Lake Orion's defense wasn't great either. But yet, Lake Orion had a chance to win the game. I mean, Tristan Hill, he had a big game. He had two long rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown. You know, so... When you look at Lake Orion offensively, the only thing that doomed them was the fumbles. They had two critical errors. I mean, one that killed the drive when they were at the eight-yard line in the third quarter, and then the other one was that final play of the game, you know, where they fumbled the ball and Clarkson recovered it. Lake Orion was in that game. When you look at the Dragons now, Lake Orion, they got to win out. That's obvious. You win out, you're in. I mean, yes, you're tied with Sterling Heights Stevenson right now in playoff points. But if you win that game, you win North Farmington, you win Celine, you're in the playoffs. That's what I tell Coach Chris Bell right now. You win those two games, you're in the playoffs. You can't afford to lose anymore. That's what I would tell the Dragons right now. You can't afford to lose those next two games. You do, you're out. You win those two games, you're in. That's how it, that's that's the bottom line. Um, for Clarkston, when you look at the Wolves, um, defensively, this team, I'm gonna be honest with you, you're not good defensively. I mean, when you look at obviously, yes, you've had you got some really good players in. You got Desmond Steffens there. You got um, I don't trust. You know, you have Kevin Dighton there. Um, but. I just don't, you, your line gives up a lot of points. That, I mean, your defense gives a lot of points. That tells me something right there. That really does tell me something. Is your defense is not good. You know, you got to have your offense on the field. Obviously, with Mike Hine there, at quarterback, quarterback, you got, obviously, Ethan Clark um, at running back. You have um, Cole Jarvis at wide receiver. Um I thought Jarvis had a nice game against Lake Orion. Um, I thought Desmond Steffens had a nice game against Lake Orion. Um, but everybody's going to look at Ethan Clark and say, okay, you know what I mean? You give the ball to Clark, you know what I mean? And let Clark do his thing, you know? You know, Ethan Clark does remind me of Phoenix Dickinson of Lapeer. He really does. I mean, I don't, not virtually the same player, but but they virtually have the... You know, their running back, their running mentality reminds me a lot of... Clark's mentality running the ball reminds me a lot of Dixon. Um, even though Dixon could throw the ball, but Dixon and Clark, you know, I've seen Clark playing youth football. Um, and I'll tell you what, he's a good one. He is a really, really good one. I mean, Clarkson hasn't missed a beat. Now, the schedule's going to get tough. I mean, yeah, they got Oak Park, and then they got Lapeer. Um, Lapeer this week. That's going to be really interesting, because Lapeer's undefeated. And Clark's going to travel up to Lapeer. Um, but Lapeer's had to survive some games. I mean, they had to survive Grand Ledge. I mean, you know, they still got to play Davison. I mean, they just knocked off Grand Blank. They knocked off Saginaw Heritage. That's a big win for them. So, we'll see what happens with Clarkson. So, I take on the red... I mean, West Bloomfield, Adams, and Clarkson, they both shared the red this year. 
Um, you know, Lake Orion sits fourth. Um, I, I mean, Stony Creek was fifth, and Oxford was sixth. Kind of what I thought would be the results of the standings coming in um, when I did the previous show. Um, but credit's where credit's due. So we'll see what happens going forward um, with the um, with the Red. Of course, they're going to be heading into um, the crossover um, coming up, and then of course you have the um, you have Clarkson at Lapeer, and then you have um, Oak Park at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, and those are some games we're going to preview right now. Um, let, we're we're going to start previewing some games coming up here um, real shortly here. Of course, um, of course, um, we got our first game here. We got um. Of course, our first game here of the day we got is um gonna be the um the gold matches. We got Pontiac and Ferndale. Um, this is gonna be just really interesting. Um, you know, Ferndale's rolling on all cylinders right now, even though they lost last week. Um, Pontiac, I still don't know where they're at mentally. Um, but I'm gonna take um, but I'm gonna take um. In this one, I'm going to take Ferndale here pretty convincingly. Um, I just think they're going to be itching to bounce back at the way they lost last week. Um, I just I, I just don't know. Pontiac, I, I think they got a great chance to win next week. Um, but with Ferndale, I, it's going to be a tough task. I, I, I like the Eagles in that one pretty convincingly over the Phoenix. Um, <laughs> Avondale and Royal Oak. Um, my take on this is, you know, Royal Oak, we know what they're going through right now with the Dustin Truitt situation. Um, we don't know where the player's mindset's at. Are they distracted? You know, Abner just came off a big emotional win last week against um, North Farmington. Um, in this one here, I'm going to take Avondale here. Don't be surprised if this is a blowout because... Like I said, I don't know where Royal Oaks' ment ment mental state's at, especially with the wake what's been going on. I mean, obviously you had the the positive story of Ellie Finch, obviously with the homecoming um homecoming king and queen uh, homecoming queen captain playing football, and then and then you have last week with, of course, your coach being put on administrative leave. Um, so but I don't know where their mindset's at. So that's a challenge for coach for Coach Corey Campbell. Um. To really figure out, you know what I mean? To, you know, to see where your kid's mindset's at. Avondale's on an emotional high right now. I mean, they just knocked off a very good, proud North Farm to program. So, you really look at it here. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting. But I really think in this game here, I'm going to take Avondale. Because of the emotional high, they're getting a lot of confidence. Um... They're gaining confidence, and that's a dangerous sign, especially for a team that's hanging the postseason. In Royal Oak right now, they're really struggling to find themselves an identity right now. Really are. Um, let's go now to Groves and Berkeley. Um, this matchup here, this is going to be a mismatch on paper here. Um, yes, Groves is going to have a tough... Berkeley's got a good line. Um, defense has not been very good for um, Berkeley all year long. Offensively, they've really been struggling. So in this one here, and Groves right now is coming off a tough loss um, <coughs> to Rochester. So I'm gonna take the um, I'm gonna take the Falcons in this one over the Bears because of the they got experience. Obviously, it's the big wins. Obviously, um, but I just think Groves right now, the way they're playing right now is they've got a lot. A, um, they got a lot of motivation coming into them. I just don't know where Berkeley's confidence, momentum is going to get them. If I mean, like, so we'll see what happens. I mean, but Grove still has a lot to play for. Berkeley, not so much. So we'll see what happens there going forward there in that one. Um, then you have um, you have um, Troy Athens and Troy. This is going to be interesting. Um, Troy's got a lot to play for. Um, this chance they, they can share the title, the blue title, it all comes down to if Farmington can knock off Seaholm. That's going to be really interesting there. But Troy and Troy Athens, last year, Troy Athens, Troy was down, I think, 17 nothing. 
And they came back and won that game. Actually, no, it was 20 nothing. Then they came back and won that one 21-20. So, <coughs> we know that Troy Athens is motivated for that game. But it's at Troy. It's at home. Troy's going to be wearing all black. I mean, Troy Athens will be wearing all white. So, when you really look at this matchup here, it's going to come down to is can Troy's offense solve Troy Athens' defense? That's the big question here. Troy Athens, defensively, they're not bad. And then you look at on the flip side, then you look at Troy's offense, you know what I mean? You know, all year long, this their offense, I'll be honest with you, has been terrible. Their offense has been atrocious. Till last week when they put 42 against Royal Oak. Their defense, Troy's defense has been solid all year long. Really good. The only hiccups at 52 against Seaholm. Um, so when I look at this game here on paper, it does favor Troy. It does favor Troy. But something in my gut tells me that I think an upset could occur here in this game. It could happen. Um, so if you're a team that's on upset alert, Troy has to be an upset alert. But I don't like Troy in this game because of, you know, Darius Whiteside, because of, you know, their kicking game, the strong punting game. Um, I think... I think um, if they can get, if Nolan Block can have another big game like he did last week, um, and Zach Pinoz has been outstanding all year long as a punter. Um, if they can get good, if they can get good quarterback play from Parker Brandenburg, um, if they can get qu- good quarterback play, I think Troy can knock off Troy Athens. But don't be surprised if both Asher brothers, you know, if there was an upset pick here, this is it. So, don't be surprised here if Troy Athens knocked off Troy on the road and returned the favor. But I just think Troy, you know, they're still playing for something. Um, I just think that Troy's going to be, um, you know, the Colts are going to be, um, yeah, they're going to be motivated. So, we'll see what happens to them going forward there. But I got Troy win that game. For the blue title, you got Seaholm taking on um, Farmington. This is going to be really interesting. It's gonna be, I think it's at Falcon Field. Um, oh no, I think it's at. No, I think it's in the forest. Um, but I gotta take a look at that. But if it's at Farmington, I think TV Ten, Farmington TV Ten will be there. Um, this is going to be a really interesting game of two different styles. Farmington likes to spread you out. Seaholm likes to run the veer. So. Whoever's defense shows up and shuts the opponent's strength of offense down, it's going to win this game. That's pretty much how I'm going to look at it. Seaholm has not seen a quarterback like Dominic Peschel. Peschel is going to be the top, the toughest quarterback Seaholm has seen all year. So when I look at this game, I think it's going to be really interesting. Um, I think the Maples, the Veer. It's going to be, the Veer is a nightmare for anybody. It is an absolute nightmare for anybody. So, when I look at this game here, Farmington's defense will be tested. Seaholm's defense should be tested. But I've got Seaholm in this game because of the Kinney brothers, because of Robbins. I think Robbins has a big game here in this one. Now, if Farmington can keep Seaholm within 14 points, they have a chance in this one. Or 20 points. North Farmington did that against them. So, this is going to be really interesting. It'll be a test on both sides. I think both teams are playoff teams. So, this is going to be a good indicator to see where everybody's at going into the postseason. But I like Seaholm in this game because of the experience. But if, but if Farmington turns this game into an athletic game, don't be surprised it happens. So we'll see what happens in that one. That we will. Um, Lake Orion at North Farmington. Um, North Farmington's postseason hopes were shot this week um, with the loss to Avondale. Lake Orient's playing for their playoff lives here. Lake Orient should be absolutely motivated after giving 48 last year. They gave up 48 to North Farmington last year. They should be absolutely motivated. 
I remember being on the sideline for that. And it was tough. Really difficult to see. To see Ryan Shelby having a big game against Lake Orion's defense. Lake Orion's played a far tougher schedule than North Farmington is. I think Lake Orion gets their revenge and then some in this game. Because, like I said, they're still playing for something right now. North Farmington, I don't know what they're playing for. So, when you look at this game here, it's yes, it's North Farmington Senior Night. But I just think Lake Orion, you know, I think they're going to be a team on a mission. Um, they're going to be a team, I think, motivated. And watch for Billy Roberson in this game. I think he's going to have a big game here against North Farmington's defense. Um, I think the depth of Lake Orion should wear North Farmington down. Um, but we'll see. The match, coaching match between John Herstein and Chris Bell, that's going to be interesting to watch. So, but like I said, I got Lake Orion winning this one. I think this has got blowout written up. I think it's got blowout potential. But if it's close, you know, don't be surprised if it's close. But it's got blowout written all over it if, if Lake Orion plays very well in this game. So I got the Dragons as one pretty convincingly. Um, and then we have, um, let's go to the white red crossovers. Um, our, um, now we got Oak Park and Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, this one's interesting. Um, I think Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, the way that they're playing right now, they've been inconsistent. Um, Oak Park has really been struggling all year long. I think Oak Park's got a chance in this game. I really do. Um, but I'm going to take Orchard Lake St. Mary's being at home. Um, I like the Eaglets in this one. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there in that one. Um, now for a team that had a chance to ruin an undefeated season, you got Clarkson at Lapeer. This is interesting because you look at this game here and Lapeer's undefeated. They played a tough schedule. They knocked off Grand Blank. They just knocked off Grand Ledge last week. Um, Lapeer's got a quarterback in Zach Elogiak who's played wonderfully. He's played really well. But he hasn't seen a defense like Clarkson. Clarkson's, yeah, the Clarkson's only lost, Clarkson's lost two games this year. They lost to, they lost to, and they lost to West Bloomfield. And then they lost to, um, Davison. Davison still has to play Lapeer week nine. That's going to be interesting. Do I think Clarkson gives Lapeer their first loss? In Lapeer. Clarkson's had Lapeer's number. They have had their number. I think it's going to continue. I like Clarkson this game. Lapeer hasn't met a running back like Ethan Clark yet. Ethan Clark is a really good running back. You have Cole Dillinger up front. Lapeer's got a... But then again, Clarkson hasn't met a... I mean, Clarkson's seen quarter, good quarterbacks. They've seen really good quarterbacks. I think Lapeer, they're they're good. Lapeer's good, no doubt. This is going to be a close game. But I just think Zach Lejack hasn't seen a defense, very athletic. Hasn't seen a guy like Desmond Steffens. I think he's going to have a big game here in this one. Don't be surprised if Desmond Steffens gets a pick six this week. Do not be surprised. Um, I think he ha he creates havoc in this game defensively against Olegiak. Um, but I, I really like Clarks in this game. I, 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 there's something that tells me that I think if the Wolves win this game, big-time playoff points, big-time confidence for them going in the postseason. Um, and then let's look at, um, and then let's look at, um, you got Harper Woods and Rochester Adams. Um, <laughs> This one's going to be tall order for Harper Woods. Um, in all honesty, it's going to be a really tall order. Um, like I said, I mean, you know, Harper Woods is, you know, life in the OA, you know, it has its different animals. And Harper Woods is experiencing that. Adams is probably is a different animal. They run the Veer offense. It's a time possession offense. Very difficult match for Harper Woods and their athletes because it's a sign of football. Do I see that happening here? Do I see Harper Woods being Adams? No. 
I see Adams winning this one pretty convincingly. Pretty convincingly blowout. We'll see what happens there in that one. Um, Oxford and Bloompia Hills. Um, this will be at Bloompia Hills. Um, this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Oxford has really struggled all year offensively. Um, they have struggled defensively. They struggled on both sides of the football. Um, Bloomby Hills has really struggled defensively, especially. Um, they gave 55 to Harper Woods last week. Um, this one here, I like Oxford in this one. Because I think Oxford, they can go down the field, play pound the rock football. I think Oxford's line is better than Bloomby Hills' line. Yes, Bloomby Hills is C.J. Jackson. But I don't know how... I don't know... Oxford's going to want to out-tough you. They're going to want to out-grit you. And I think that's what's going to happen here. I think Oxford's going to out-grit and out-tough Bloomby Hills. And deny them that chance to touch that victory bell. I think it'll be very interesting. But I, that's what I see right now. So I'm going to take the Wildcats to knock off the Blackhawks. In that one. Um, then we have Rochester and Stony Creek. This is a huge, huge game for Stony. If they want to make the playoffs. For Rochester, it's just, for them, it's just trying to get to beat a city rival. They have had issues against their city rivals. They failed against Adams. Now comes a good... Stony Creek team, where I think for them, they're beatable. And this has got the makings of a classic here in the city of Rochester. It's got a makings of a classic. And then on the flip side for Stony Creek, you win these next two games, you're guaranteed in the playoffs. That's how you, that's how you got to approach it if you're coaching Nick Merlo. I mean, that's how you approach it. I think this is going to be a really close game. I think it's going to be it's going to be a one score game. It's at Stony Creek. I think Nick Merlo's team gets it done. I like Stony in this one because Justin Taylor, because of John Fogel, the keys to the receivers. If they can find proven receivers in that one, could McKay could McKay be an, an answer? That's going to be interesting. And Stony Creek runs an offense that can slow the pace down. Rochester, on the other hand, they've been very good the last three weeks. Don't get me wrong. They've been really good the last three weeks. But in this one here, I've got to take Stony Creek in this one. I'm going to take Stony Creek in that game. And then our last game we got is West Bloomfield traveling to Southfield Arts and Tech to take on the Warriors. This is going to be a very interesting game. <coughs> the question is, is Southfield Arson Tech for real? If they can knock off a perennial team like West Bloomfield, then they put a believer in me. Now, both teams are playoff teams. That's not a question. The test here is, how would Isaiah Marshall do against a team that can... That has really good corners. Is he going to test Samaj Morgan? That is the big question. I think Isaiah Marshall will test Samaj Morgan. West Bluefield is trying to prove that they're not that team that lost to Adams. This is going to be very interesting. Because West Bluefield does not have Raekwon Nance. They're forced to play a makeshift offense right now. Yes, Kenny Jones is there. Yes, you got Brandon Davis Swan playing both sides of the ball. But in this matchup here, I think this is going to be really interesting. A I still don't trust A&T's defense in this game. But A&T, they got the offense. West Bloomfield, I'm still concerned about them offensively, but they're stout defensively. But in this game here, I'm going to take the Lakers. Because I think West Bloomfield really has the... Um, they have the athletes. They have Kenny Jones. They can slow the game down. I think he has a big game. I think he and Samaj Morgan both have big games in this one. Amir Herring's going to have a big game up front. Um, 
I don't be surprised. This is a 54-48 type game. Don't be surprised. But we'll see what happens. We will see what happens going forward there. Final thoughts. We'll see what happens going forward. Um, of course, we've had um, some regional action in, in golf. We, in, also in some tennis as well. So, of course, they're on the blog as well. So, we'll see what happens going forward there. Okay, now we have a sign off here. Um, see what happens going forward here. Take care. God bless. I'll see you all next week, everybody. See you. And God bless everybody. See you next week. Take care.